All right, Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone, and salutations to the Akim that's teaching the truth and sincerity. And Shalom to the believers and the followers of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. This is your brother Barak Abar. And today I want to get into the bridegroom cometh, so put on your righteous garments. Once again, the topic is the bridegroom cometh, put on your righteous garments. Okay, because. Yahweh Shah draweth nigh as plain as day, okay, for them to have ears to hear and um, eyes to see, okay. The signs of the times is happening before our eyes, okay. The natural disasters occurring all over the, all around the world, okay. The uh, earthquakes, sinkholes, typhoons, uh, 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 hurricanes, all that's going on around the world. The wars and rumors of wars. How um, America is having friction and having problems with the uh, um, EU and Israel right now. Okay. So the things is happening. So we got to put on our righteous garments. Okay. Not not these so-called physical garments, but our minds, the garments of our minds, our spirits. Okay. You know, unlike, you know, some kids like to boast and brag about their garments, but it's not about your physical uh, garments. It's about your spiritual garments. Okay. We're going to get into some scriptures because this is the time of the Passover, okay? The Passover is near, and, um, you know, during this time, a lot of living gets trimmed, a lot of fat gets trimmed, okay? So brothers need to cast out all the malice in their hearts, okay? All the impurities, whatever negative, uh, uh, negative thoughts they might have towards brothers or whatever, whatever's going on in your spirit, okay, negatively. You need to cast it away. Whatever excess things you need, you're doing or you're into, you need to cast it away, you know, because Yahweh Shah will cast you away, okay? Like the scriptures say, um, I know thy works that thou art neither hot or cold, but thou, if, if thou, I would rather thee be hot or cold, but since you are lukewarm, he's going to spew you out of his mouth. And I know none of y'all want to go <laughs> be spewed out of the Lord's mouth. And you can see the ones that's been spewed out of the Lord's mouth because they become reprobates. Okay, so we gotta put our spoke, um, righteous garments on, be spiritually right, be spiritually strong, and continue to endure to the end. Let's get into it though. This is Romans chapter thirteen, verse 11, 12, 11. and then knowing the time that now is high time to awake out of sleep, for our salvation is nearer than when we believe. You know, this is a famous script. Because this is a constant reminder, salvation is nearer than we would believe. So we don't need to be caught up into any bullshit that's outside of this truth. We don't need to be caught up into petty shit with brethren and Akim, you know. So forgive your brother so your Lord can forgive you. Like he says in the prayer, you know, forgive forgive the Akim. That means the men that's, fellow, that's laboring inside you. Um, you know, the men that's teaching the doctrine. The same doctrine as your elders and as you, you know. So it won't be no malice, no strife. So Yahweh Shah will be able to forgive you. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah will have mercy upon you. But salvation draw near than we believe. Salvation draw near. That means the destruction draweth near. So we have to be right. So Yahweh Shah could so we can be ripe in the spirit. So Yahweh Shah could pick us. When it's um, time for that deliverance. But if you're a part of the elect, you're going to get picked anyway. But you get the message. Okay, let's get into it. This is Revelation chapter 19, verse 6. It says, And I heard as it were a voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of the mighty thunder, it saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord power, the omnipotent, the omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and let us be glad and rejoice. It give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come. What's the marriage of the Lamb? When Yahweh Shai reunites with his elect, the 144,000 and the one-third, okay? Because Israel is referred to in the scriptures as a woman. Let's get that, okay? And this is only for the elect. Let me make this clear, because all Israel ain't going to be a part of that marriage, and we're going to prove that with the scriptures, okay? The ones that was Chosen, not only called, but chosen. Okay, those are the same ones that's going to be a part of that, take part of that marriage. This is Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 2. I have likened the daughter of Zion to a comely and delicate woman. 
Zion is go back to the Hebrew word to Zion, which means monument, and we um which means to remember. So Israel is the most high the most high um remembrance is in Israel. The most high dwells amongst Israel, okay? And not is not all of Israel, but the elect, his sheep, his pasture, the ones that hear the shepherd voice and cleaves on to it. Okay. Let's get back to Revelation chapter 9, verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice. Give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come. Okay. That's the salvation. Okay. The deliverance, which is going to be by the chariots of Israel, a.k.a. the UFOs, the clouds of heaven. Okay. And the flame by night. Okay. Those are going to be the things that deliver us um, um, from this destruction, from that thermonuclear fire, which is going to cleanse this earth okay that fire because fly fire is a cleansing agent all right and that's going to cleanse this earth from all the uh, uh, uh vile and defiling that this so-called white man this devil the edomites have done to it okay because america is going to be destroyed so it says the marriage of the lamb has come and his wife have made herself ready the wife have made herself ready we which is the elect Okay, they're the ones that made themselves ready for this marriage because they're out there doing the work in truth and sincerity. Okay, they're teaching the word, they are, uh, uh, they're fellowshipping, they're being brotherly, they're being charitable amongst their brethren, they're forgiving their brethren. Now, this is only for the elect, meaning the ones that's um, sighing and crying for the abominations that be done in the midst, the ones that has that spiritual mark, thawa mean exempt from judgment, okay? The ones that's teaching according to the doctrine that's not um, straying off from the doctrine which was taught by the elders of Great Millstone, okay? And it says, and to hear, verse 8, and to hear was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Okay, the Lord's statutes and commandments. Okay, and the teaching of the correct doctrine and faith. Okay, all that is intertwined, is intermingled with each other. Okay, all that goes together. Okay, it says in saith, verse 9, And he saith unto me, Write, Blessed are they, blessed are they which are called unto the marriage of the, called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, these are true sayings of the Most High. So the men that you see out there giving their lives and sacrificing their lives to teach this word, a lot of those men are part of the elect. Lord will we be them chosen. Lord will you the chosen. Lord will I'm the chosen. Okay? Because the Most High can do what he see please. Okay? If you feel that you're not a part of his chosen, guess what? You ain't going to be out there no more. You ain't going to be out there teaching. You ain't going to be doing these sit downs. You ain't going to be building with brothers no more. You're just going to be a castaway. You're going to be back out in the world. You're not even going to be seen no more. It was like you was never there. You was there and then you was never there. Okay? You was out there teaching and then when you're going, you're going. Ain't nobody going to talk about you. You're just going to be ancient history. Okay? So um, let's get the next script. This is Psalms, chapter 132, Psalms, chapter 132, verse 9. Let thy priests be clothed with righteousness, and let thy saints shout for joy. Okay, let thy priests be clothed with righteousness, and let thy saints shout for joy. The priests are the men, the elders. And their righteous fruit, okay, the ones that is teaching this word in truth and sincerity, the ones that's sacrificing their lives for the Lord, for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. They forsake of all, okay. They gave up all their worldly possessions and desires, meaning you ain't literally throw the shit out your house. <laughs> you ain't literally just sell all your shit, but your mind frame isn't into the things that you have. Because you know it's all vain and it's void. It's like it's 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 an illusion. It's not it's not everlasting. It's not everlasting. It's 
only uh, 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 is but for a moment. It's not going to last for forever. But the understanding of these scriptures, the Lord's statutes, commandments, the kingdom of heaven is forever. Okay. So those are the priests that be clothed with righteousness. And how are you righteous? By rehearsing the Lord's statutes and commandments. Because those things keep you clean. Those keep those things keep you holy. All right. This is Revelations chapter 3. Revelations chapter 3, verse 18. It says, On to, and on to the angel of the church of Thyteria, write these things. Write these things. Save the Son of the Most High, who have his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass. It says, I know thy works. It says, I know thy works, charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Now, withstanding, I have a few things. Let me make sure I got this all. Salak, Salakia. This is Revelation. I was reading 2 and 18. This is Revelation chapter 3, verse 18. It says, I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire and white, and, and white raiment, raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thy eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. I'm going to read that again. I counsel thee to buy thee gold that is tried in the fire, which means it's clean, okay? Which means it's purified. So he's telling his men to, I, I want your faith, I want your, uh, I want your temple, I want your faith to be gold that is tried in the fire. I want your spirit to be gold that is tried in the fire. Okay, which means clean. Okay, and what makes you clean? Suffering, <laughs> going through this hell and enduring through it, overcoming it. That's what makes you clean. Okay, the Lord's statutes and commandments. That's what makes you clean. Okay, it said. I counsel thee to body me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich. Rich in what? Faith. Not rich in this world. Not rich in this society. Not rich with these niggas. Not rich with tangible dollars, but rich in faith. And it says that thou mayest be rich in white raiment. Okay? In spirit. That thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. What's, saying, like, what's the shame of thy nakedness? That's sin. It says, and anoint thy eyes with eye salve. That's a cleaning agent for your eyes, okay? That thou mayest see. And how do you see? By um, rehearsing the righteous acts, praying and fasting. That you see the kingdom of heaven. That you can see the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, okay? And many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. So don't take rebuke or being chastised as a... a, a a bad thing. That's a beautiful thing to be rebuked and chastised because that shows that the Lord loves you, man. When you feel pain or you being rebuked by your brother, that's love, man. Even though it feels fucked up. You're supposed to feel fucked up because you did something wrong. But at the same time, know that someone cares for you because if they didn't care, nobody would say nothing. That's when you got something to worry about when you don't go through nothing, when you don't get rebuked, Okay. Not saying that you're supposed to get rebuked all the fucking time. You know, you ain't supposed to be simple. But know that when when you're being chastised or you're being rebuked, that is a love. It's a thing of love, not a thing of hate. Okay? And that's what these niggas got misconstrued. They think that when they're being rebuked or chastised, that, well, they're getting cursed out by the elders and by the brothers. They think that's a thing of hate, but it's actually a thing of love. Okay? If they knew the scriptures, they understand that. Okay, and it says, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. And that's Yahweh Shah's words. This is the words Yahweh Shah gave on. This is the message that Yahweh Shah gave on to the churches. Okay, and this go for the Akim too. 